thought for you that uh, came to me this morning. After I left here, I got to thinking about something, and uh, this thought hit me, and I uh, went and grabbed a bite to eat real quick, and went home, got in the study, and looked at this passage, and uh, seen that, sure enough, where the thought come from, so I'm just going to give you what the Lord laid on my heart this afternoon for you, actually, so this is a fresh one. Acts chapter 20. I'm going to look at a, just a few verses here. Look at verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now you just think I'm long-winded, amen? Uh, the preachers get accused of being long-winded, but here he preached and he kept preaching until midnight. Verse 8, And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sank down within, with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So here, uh, the preacher's going along. He's sitting in the window. He, he, he's getting sleepy. He can't hold his eyes open anymore, so he just goes to sleep while the preacher's preaching, and he falls out a third floor window. And the Bible said, and was taken up dead. Then in verse 10, and Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. They all thought him dead. They all called him dead. He was dead for all manner of practical speaking. He was dead. But Paul said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed, and they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. That wasn't just a little comfort, there's a lot of comfort, amen? He, he, he was brought back to life. Now, that, that passage is very easily explained. We can look at it and see what happened. We can understand with the preacher preaching, and the preaching going along, he was tired, he's probably... Uh, exhausted from his day's work. He was having trouble keeping his attention on the preaching. His mind probably began to wander, and when his mind began to wander, he lost focus, he lost track of what the preacher was talking about, and it became boring, and before he knew it, he was nodding off. I like what Danny Castle said. I believe he's the first one I ever heard say this. He preached on this passage years ago. When I was just a young Christian, I remember him preaching on this passage and he said I'll give you a way to remember this man's name. If you'd have fell out the window you'd have cussed too. Amen. <laughs> he said so now you'll not forget this guy's name. His name is Eutychus. Amen. And if you'd have fell out the window you'd have cussed too. Amen. So now you'll remember his name you'll know who he is because his story is very important. It's recorded in the Bible for us. It's not there just to fill space. It's not there just to take up room. It's there because there's a lesson that we need to learn. And tonight, I hope we do learn that lesson. My thought come from verse 10. There at the end of the verse, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. They all said he was dead. They all felt that he was dead. They all looked at him. He looked dead. He, he sounded dead. I mean, it, it, they, they couldn't see him any other way but dead. But Paul said, there's still life in him. There's still life in him. The world may think he's dead. Everybody else may call him dead. But Paul said, there's still some life in him. God's not done with him yet. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying a lot of you act like you're dead. But the fact of the matter is, you're not dead yet. And that's what I want to preach on a little bit. You're not dead yet. I mean, you're really not. You're not dead yet. I mean, we sit around and we just throw in the towel. We give up so easily. And we just go on like, man, this, this is it. This is the end. It's over. No, it ain't over until the Lord calls us home. Amen. Amen. 
were not dead yet. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm going out fighting. Amen. I don't want to be sitting. I don't want to be just idle when, when it's my time. I, I, I like the old saying, I want to go with my boots on. Amen. I don't want to go fighting. I don't want to. I don't want to be laying around and and relaxing and not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Too many church members today, though, they've fallen, and they've fallen a long way. But I want you to know, you're not dead yet. You may have fallen. You may be sleepy. You may think that this is it. And you're on your last stretch, but you're not dead yet. You're not dead yet. So don't give up. You may be half in and half out, but you're not dead yet. Several, several times over the last couple of years, I've asked for help. I don't ask for help a whole lot, but I have asked for help, and you'll remember this when I say it. I've asked for help, and I've asked you what kind of church you want to be. Do you want to be a singing, shouting, soul-winning church? Amen. Or do you want to be a dry, dead, dull church? Church is your choice. You can make a choice. That's your choice 100%. What kind of church we have is totally up to you. We can be a church where we just come in and we sit around and we stare at the choir when they sing and we don't say anything. We don't raise our hands. We don't move. We can stare at the visitors when they come in and we cannot... We can stay in our seats and refuse to get up and shake their hand. We can sit around and stare at the preacher while he's preaching. He can preach his heart out. He can preach on the blood. He can preach on the grace of God. And you can sit there and stare at him all day long and not raise your hand if you want to. Right. Or you can shout. Yeah. And you can shout for joy. And you can think, yeah, that's right, preacher, that's right. You can think about what he's saying and realize that God's good better to you than this world's ever been to you. Right. And think about that a little while. Leave the world outside and enjoy yourself in the Lord for a little while when you're in here. Amen. 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 It's your choice. Which kind of church do you want to have? Well, I'll tell you, if you want to be a singing, shouting, soul-winning church, we will grow. God will bless it because that's the kind of church God wants. But if you want to be that dead, dull, just lifeless church, we can just sit around and stare at each other till we die off. Amen. You say, preacher, that's horrible. That's terrible. Ain't none of us getting out of here alive. Amen. And I just about beat some of you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, seriously. And I'm going to give you something to think about here. We start making excuses way too easy anymore. Yep. We make excuses way too easy. Now listen, we all having a hard time. We all go through troubles and trials. I know there's times that we need to come apart to keep from coming apart. I understand sometimes our jobs will keep us from church, and I understand different things do happen, but some of you have been out a whole lot more than you need to be. Some of you just looking for an excuse not to be in church. Amen? Amen. Things can happen and things do come up. I understand that. You're talking to a man that had kidney stone, amen, not long ago, and I've had three heart attacks in the last two months. I've had both of those, and I've been here more than some of y'all. You say, preacher, don't preach to me, it's the truth. Yep. You're making excuses not to be where you ought to be. And then it's hurting no one but yourself. I told you last week, I don't worry about those in church that's going through troubles and trials. They're where they can get help. Mm -hmm. It's those that's drifting away, that it's those that are falling by the wayside, those that are out from under His wing, if you will, that I worry about. They're the ones that that old lion's walking about seeking whom He may devour. That's the straggler He's looking for. And you're no stronger than me, and I can't take the devil on. Don't think you can take him on and win. Amen. The best thing you can do is run in church and get as close to the Lord as you can. Amen. But anyway, I, I, I want to preach just a little bit on Eutychus. I don't know how long I'll be. I'm just going to preach till we're done. We'll go to the house. But let's look at this fellow just a little bit. First thing I want to point out 
was he was disconnected. See, he was sitting in the window. I imagine there was probably chairs set up in the, around the room and everything, and he found him a good location where he could kind of preach, but, and he was preaching to him. But, but Eutychus, he kind of got off to himself a little bit, and he said, wait a minute, there's a window. We're just going to pretend this is a window. Here's a window. I'm just, I'm just going to sit over here. I'm just going to sit in this windowsill. Oh, feel that breeze coming through there. Don't that feel good? And he's just sitting there and he's just he's disconnected from the room because he's over here where he can see what's going on outside. He's, 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 he's kind of he, he's in church, but he's as far into the world as he can possibly get. He can still look out and see his old buddies going down the street to the old bar where he used to go. He looks at it and he's listening to Paul. And man, Paul's talking some good stuff. Paul's telling him the gospel and the mystery and the rapture. He's telling him how God's blessed and how God's we're under a new covenant and how through Jesus Christ, man, we can have the victory. And things have changed and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, he's preaching it straight. But he can start to hear that old music where he's sitting. And his mind goes back to the old life. And then he starts to look back at Paul and try to pay attention to Paul and his attention's divided and he's lost where he was. He don't know where he is in the Scriptures anymore. And now it's just become a little boring and he's getting a little long-winded because he ain't been keeping up with it. So he's starting to... Well, maybe when this is over I can go out and spend some time with my buddies. And he gets tired sitting there. And he starts getting sleepy. And he don't pay attention. He's disconnected from the group. What are you saying, preacher? I ain't saying nothing. I want to ask you. Is that you? Is the preacher not doing anything for you anymore? There's a time when you come and you say, Oh, I love the preaching. Oh, I love the teaching. I love this. I love that. Then all of a sudden, you can't get you in church. What's happened? What's happened? Is that old world calling you back? Is that the old gang's coming around again? He was disconnected. He was disconnected. He was straddling the fence. He can't quite seem to leave the world. Is that your problem? Here's another problem that we have. He was drifting. He was drifting. Just imagine now. Now, now, he's, now, now, now we've all seen this. I remember there's a guy worked with, uh, that we worked with. He's a big guy. I'm not going to say his name. Love this guy. He was a great man. Great man. Real good man. In the parts department. He was a big man though. He was a man's man. He was a big man. And we'd cook for some reason. He was a good cook and he brought his cooker up there and fixed up a bunch of chicken and we'd eat and, and man we'd sit around the table there during lunch time and we picked out. We had us a feast. Man, we're poor to pit chicken ain't got nothing on this guy. I mean, he made it good. And we'd eat till we just was stuffed. And we were sitting there at the back of the parts department, had the big garage door open, a little bit of wind was coming through there. And he was sitting in a chair. And, and it, it, it wasn't an armchair. He, he was so big, he, he, he didn't like them. He liked just straight chairs. But he was sitting there and he had his hands folded on his belly. And he started doing this. And we started laughing, we started talking a little bit lower, you know, and a couple of them started singing a little lullabies, you know, and he was, he just kept pulling himself back, old head's gone. And before you know it, he about beat that table to death trying to keep from falling in the floor when it finally, when finally the enough weight had shifted, he was going. Amen. But see, that's kind of what happened to this guy. He was drifting. He was drifting. He was in church. But he was drifting further and further, deeper and deeper to sleep, further and further away, more and more out of focus with what was going on in the church. His heart was not in it. He was as far away as he could get. Are you drifting? Are you drifting? He was distracted. 
So he's sitting at the window. He was sitting at the window because there was something out there that was probably more important to him than what's going on in the church. Yeah. Is there something more important out there than what's going on at the church for you? Is there something more important on Wednesday night and Sunday night? Is there something more important than Sunday school out there? I mean, is there something more important? I mean, what's out there that's so important that, that you can't get out of the window long enough to enjoy what's going on inside? Oh, my. He was sitting there. He was distracted. Not only was he distracted, but he was distracting. Because you know him sitting in the window what was, a, what was going on. They probably had the window raised. We've got air conditioning and boy, don't it feel good. All the ladies said, no, it's cold in here. Put some clothes on. No, <laughs> it's plenty warm in here, amen? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he was sitting in the window. They probably raised the window so air could get in. But when he sat in the window, you know what he was doing? He was blocking the air. No one else could get the wind. That's the Holy Spirit, John chapter 3. He was keeping the Spirit from moving. He was keeping anyone else from feeling the Spirit. What do you mean? Because he was distracting. See, he was sitting there in the window. And the kids over here, I guarantee you, they put down their iPads and their iPhones. They weren't playing with anything or texting anybody anymore. They was looking at him, taking bets how long he was going to last before he fell. <laughs> they was giggling and punching each other. That they weren't listening to the preacher anymore. They was watching him and wondering, how long is he going to last? He's just hanging there out the window, enjoying the breeze. Wasn't worried about what was going on here, and he was just drifting, drifting. And there he goes. He's gone. Why? Because he was where he wanted to be. He didn't care about what was going on. And he didn't realize that his actions were so distracting. So distracting. I remember I read a story about a preacher. He had preached a pretty good sized church and he, he had a problem. People went to sleep on him all the time. And he couldn't figure out why everybody slept on him so much. The congregation was older and he was kind of a monotone preacher. He was a good preacher. He had good messages, but, but he just couldn't seem to keep people awake very long. And he had a son and he was a boy. He was a boy's boy, all energy. And he said, Dad, I prayed today and I prayed today. I know the Lord's going to keep him awake today. I'm going in the balcony and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to watch Daddy and it's going to be great. So his daddy was excited. His daddy got up there and he's a preacher. He's a preaching on Calvary. He's preaching how the Lord died for us and gave His life for us and how we need to turn our hearts and our trust and our put our faith in Him and that's the finished work. He's a preaching up a storm and he looked around and people just, every now and then somebody would just jerk and go looking around and, and, and he'd just keep preaching. Thought, man, they like him this, you know. He just kept preaching. And you notice another one kind of jerked and started looking around. That's right, preacher. And looking around and he's like, boy, this is pretty good. He'd come over here and went to preaching and he just happened to notice his little boy. He had glanced up into the balcony. His little boy had leaned over the balcony and went, <laughs> and shot one of them. That's why they was jumping and looking around and hollering, hey. And he thought, well, they wasn't excited about me. My boy's shooting them. And he's, so he called him by name. And I, I'm just going to make up. He, he, he said, Little Joe. And, and Little Joe answered before his dad could correct him. He's going to say, you stop that. Don't you do that again. But before he could get it out, Joe, Little Joe said, that's all right, Daddy. Keep preaching. I'll keep waking them up. <laughs> Just keep preaching, that I'll keep waking them up. That's a good team. Maybe we need to get somebody back there shooting. Amen. We need, the Holy Spirit might be shooting today. Amen. Maybe you're not sleeping on me physically, but spiritually you're sleeping on the Lord. Are you serving the Lord like you ought to be? Are you growing like you ought to be? Are you getting what you ought to be getting? Are you doing what you ought to be doing? Think about that. Oh my, he was distracting though, sitting there in that window, hindering others 
he's hindering others by not being what he should be doing. Not being what he should be or doing what he should be doing. You know, you should be an example for the next generation, not a hindrance. What? Preacher, that's awful. That's terrible. That's the truth. We're to be the example, not the hindrance. Amen. We shouldn't hinder them from hollering and shouting. You know what hinders them from hollering and shouting? You're not hollering and shouting. Amen. You know what hinders them from singing and doing their best? You're not singing and doing your best. You know what hinders them from soul winning and going out and visitation? You're not doing it. If you do it and they see you do it, then they'll think, okay, there's something to it. But if they see you over here, just get comfortable. He's going to be a little while tonight. If they just see you relaxed, half in, half out, more worried about what's going on out there than what's going on in here. Sleeping on the job. What would your boss do if he caught you sleeping on the job? Mm, mm. He was dull. Not only was he distracted, but he was dull. There was no excitement in him whatsoever. No, no, no fire, no song, no joy, no victory. He was just dull until he fell asleep. Spiritually, some of you are just dull. Dull. You say, preacher, that's terrible. Hey, listen, I'm just, I'm just preaching. If the shoe fits, that's up to you whether you have to put it on or not. Amen. If you just stop thinking, I, I'm preaching. You know what they say? If, if you get mad, if you're just chunking rocks, you know which one's going to holler? If you throw rocks into a pack of dogs, the one that the one hollers is the one you hit. Amen. So if you feel like yapping, okay, I got you. We know who you are now. Amen. You get to hollering after a while, we know which one we got. Amen. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, wake up. Wake up. Boy, the night's far spent. The day's at hand. Now's the time to do our work. Amen. One of these days we'll get to rest. Don't be dull of hearing. Don't be dull without joy or a shout. Don't be sleeping on the job. I asked you a second ago, what would your boss do if he caught you sleeping on the job? You'd lose your job, wouldn't you? He'd fire you. He'd say, you go home. If you ain't getting enough sleep, you just go home. Just stay home for all that goes. I don't need you. Listen, as a Christian, we have a job to do. Our job is to exalt the Lord while we're here. We're to sing when it's time to sing. We're to pray when it's time to pray. We're to shout when it's time to shout. Amen? Amen. That's right. Oh, preacher, I'll shout when I feel like it. Well, then you'll never shout. That's right. You know what you got to do? You got to shout when you don't feel like it. Amen. You know when the best blessings come sometimes? When you go to church when you don't feel like it. I remember when I was in the nursing home, brother. I used to go every Tuesday night with me and my wife. Hey, um, Angie was pregnant with Amanda. And we would go in carrying a, what do you call them things? Karaoke machine. We'd carry a karaoke machine and uh, mics in there. And we'd carry in stuff if I was going to draw the charts for them because I'd go in there and I'd draw the charts and teach the Bible. She'd go in there and sing and we'd be practicing and we'd be ready every Tuesday night. Rain, shine, it didn't matter. Holiday, we went. It was Tuesday night. It was time to go. Even when she was nine months pregnant, ready to pop, I'm not kidding you. Watermelon didn't have nothing on her. I mean, you could tell she was ripe and we were still going. Why? Because we had a job to do. We had a job to do. And if we didn't do it, who was going to do it? You've got a job to do, and if you don't do it, who's going to do it? There's people watching you, whether you believe it or not. Yes. Your children are watching you. Your, your friends at work are watching you. Your neighbors are watching you. People are watching you, whether you believe that or not. They're watching you, and you are setting the example for them to follow, or you're the hindrance that's keeping them from feeling the wind. Are you sitting in the window? Blocking the wind, keeping the Holy Spirit from blowing? 
Or are you part of the solution? Amen. You in here going to shout it out and say, Preacher, I don't feel good today. Everything's, everything's going wrong. My Chevrolet's broke down. My dog bit me, and it really did. It bit me. Amen. But, but you, you, you can think of all kinds of things that's gone wrong. And you can sit there and you can have yourself discouraged and depressed. And you can sit there and have a pity party a whole time you're here. Or you can sit there and enjoy the service. That's right. You can sit there and think about how good God's been to me. Yeah. I'm saved. I'm sealed. I'm on my way to heaven. There's nothing the devil can do to take that from me. There's nothing the world can do to, to me, amen, that's going to last forever, amen. I'm going to heaven when I die. I know that. I have that assurance. A lot of religions today don't have that, but we have the truth and we know amen. that when we die, we're going to heaven and be with Jesus. Boy, well, I've got a reason to shout. Amen. Even though I don't feel good, i got reasons to shout. Even though i got bills, i got reasons to shout. Even though this is wrong or that's wrong, i still got reasons to shout. Amen. Amen. And I ought to shout. He's worthy of it. He was dead there in verse 9. There he had no life, no light, no laughter. He did no labor. He didn't love anyone. He had no longing to serve or do anything. He was dead. He was just dead. He was just there. Have you ever been there? You just feel like you're just there. You're just going through the motions. You're just there. I'm just there. Preacher. Preacher, I just don't feel nothing anymore. It's just, I don't feel nothing anymore. I don't know, preacher. It used to be fun. I used to enjoy it. I used to get something out of it. I used to couldn't wait to get to church. I used to couldn't wait to sing those old songs of Zion. I used to couldn't wait to be there. But now, preacher, I'm just there. I'm just there. I feel like something's wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. You've died. You've died spiritually. You let the devil take the life out of you. You let the world suck the life out of you. Spiritually, you're dying. You think it's gone. You think it's over. But I like verse 10. Here's the thought for the day. Here's what I want you to get. Don't have to think about anything I've said up to this point. Look at verse 10 again. Look at the end of the verse. Trouble not yourselves, for His life is in Him. Are you saved? The Holy Spirit lives inside you. How can you be dead? The Holy Spirit lives within you. He is eternal life. How can you be dead if He's in you? The problem is you just quit listening to Him. The problem is you just quit letting Him have the lead. The problem is you've listened to yourself, the world, and the devil so long that you've beat yourself up and think you can't do nothing. You'll never amount to anything. But the truth is, there's life still in them. You're not dead yet. You're not dead yet. You may have fallen. You may have fallen way down three stories. That's a pretty good fall. You may have fallen. You may be drifting. You may be distracted. You may be distracting someone else. You may be dull. The whole world can call you dead. But Paul said, there's life still in him. You're not dead yet. So I just want to preach to you just that thought. You're not dead yet. So why are you laying down? Don't lay down on the Lord. You're not dead yet. Don't quit on Him. You're not dead yet. Don't give up. You're not dead yet. Too much riding on it. I would hate to, I would hate to think that I laid down on the Lord today and Him come back tomorrow. I would hate to throw in the towel today and then next week He steps out on the cloud and calls me home. I'd hate to think that I like that seat in the window so much that I just got comfortable where I was at and went to sleep. And when he comes, he's going to find me sleeping. Church, I believe we're close to the end of this thing. I really do. I know every preacher that's ever believed the book, read the book, preached the book, believed he was going to live to see it. I'm no different. It's the way God wrote the book. He wrote it so that we feel that. If you don't feel it, it's because you ain't reading it. 
The more I read it, the more convinced I am. I'm going to live to see it. If not me, then my children. But I don't think it's far off. I want to be like Paul. I want to be found running the course. I want to feel like I finished it. I want to feel like I've done a decent job at it. I don't want to quit. Don't lay down. You're not dead yet. I'm asking you to bow your head and close your eyes.